Good to see y'all here with us at Hardison Baptist Church this morning. Take your hymn books. Turn to number 38. Number 38, when you find your spot, stand with us. We'll sing all three verses of Blessed Be the Name. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme. For man to die that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand. Exalted more and more At God the Father's own right hand Where angel hosts adore Blessed be the name, blessed be the name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name, blessed be the name Blessed be the name of the Lord his name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. It's good to be in God's house. And uh, I don't know, is it raining out there yet? Not yet? Okay, we've got a little break between the storms and all. But anyway, sure it's good to see each other today. And uh, I'm trying to keep my mind distracted and, and all that. So if I say some stupid things, it's just what I'm not thinking about today. But, uh, you know, let's go ahead and pray, ask God to meet with us and help us in a big old way this morning. But we sure need his help today. Brother Scott, ben, how about you pray for us, please? Pray. Amen. You can be seated. Y'all probably know the announcements and all, but we're having a fellowship meal immediately following this service, so don't nobody leave. And please stick around for that time, and we thank you for that time, church. We appreciate it. Um, of course, tonight, 6 o'clock service, and uh, then the regular things through the week, ladies' Bible study, 1030. Appreciate those that were able to go yesterday up to uh, Molina and uh, to the ladies' Uh, retreat up there and understand it's a place y'all that, that have been have found a place to get help and I'm thankful for that. It's always good to have a place in your life where you can go get help and um, uh, appreciate the ministry of that church doing that. Then um, 
ladies' Bible study, 1030 Tuesday morning, Wednesday night, prayer meeting at 7, uh, men's meeting Saturday. Did you say what time? 9 o'clock, okay, and bring your chainsaws, your come along, your bulldozer, and your excavator, <laughs> and your spoon and, sh- and fork, and yeah, and some yeah, yeah, a little elbow grease, yeah, okay, all right, y'all, well, let's go ahead, brother, and uh, sing a couple good songs. All right, two hundred sixty-two, two hundred sixty-two, all four verses of footsteps of Jesus. the steps of Jesus wherever they go. But I hope that's your prayer this morning. But uh, stand with me as we sing our last congregational of the morning, number 271, 271, no, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one. Not one, none else could heal all our souls, diseases. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles, He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one, no, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows about our struggles he will guide to the day 
Good morning. Good crowd here this morning. Oh, young people, y'all are dismissed. <laughs> Some things never change, right? <laughs> Look at it.
You up to that, Brother Ricky? Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Y'all turn your Bible to Second Peter. Well, I'm kind of torn this morning in more ways than one, obviously. Uh, uh, I want to go over to Acts chapter 20, but maybe we'll do that the night where Paul meets with the elders from the church of Ephesus and talks to them a little while and just gives them a little charge. Maybe we'll do that tonight. But Second Peter chapter 3. I'm going to start with that famous verse, that verse that we all are very familiar with, verse 9, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. But I'm going to read down a few verses. Good special music this morning. Y'all did a good job. It's a good song. Good job in Sunday school this morning, Brother Bryant. Okay, wait a minute. i got to clear something up before I read this. Because uh, I said something that if you didn't get the reference, probably didn't, y'all probably was wondering what in the world I was talking about. But he said he went, said he went to Arby's to get something to eat, and then said something to look to me, and and I was just, said I was just asking him if he saw the third toe. Did anybody get that? Okay, this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. It wasn't deep or theological. It was just the way my mind works. <laughs> and Brother Brian didn't get it. It's rare that he doesn't have a comeback. That was twice today already that we caused him to be kind of, uh, he kind of just looked down like, okay, and wiggled out of that box into another one and all. But anyway. Second Peter chapter 3. I'm going to start, I said I'm going to start at 8. Let's start at verse, I mean, I said I'm going to start at 9. Let's start at 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, with the elements shall and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, the, uh, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting into the coming? Of the day of the Lord, I mean the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens, um, for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in him in peace, found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, it's talking about speaking of specifically New Jerusalem in that, in that verse. Uh, you know, vacation's nice, isn't it? You go away and get away for a few days and go do some things and enjoy and all that. But those saying, ain't no place like home. Man, I, I think about old, wasn't it Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz where she t said that ain't no place like home. Ain't no place like home. Ain't no place like home. I think when she woke up from her bad dream. But, but in her life, there was, and the problem is this ain't home. We got a place to move yonder to one day. This is an eternal home. And I just want to preach on that for a few minutes. I I hope there's some 
help for us today in the Word of God. I, I know there is if we'll hear it and take it in. But um, I challenge to know what to preach on, but I can't think of anything better to preach on than heaven. And Jesus Christ, the one that made it all possible, that's going to prepare a place. So let's, let's pray. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for loving us first. We thank you for the promises in the Word of God. And Lord, this truth that even states the fact that you're not slack as men are concerned in promises. Lord, you've never failed us one time. And Lord, that we have to hold on to in your faith and your leading and all we have to hold on to those things for your truth, the truth of the Word of God, your faithfulness for days such as this. But God, I pray that you'd help me to preach in your power about this eternal home. Lord, we've got so much to look forward to. And Lord, you're so good to us now as we enjoy the journey. But God, I pray that you'd just help me to preach this morning. We'd be drawn closer to you and thinking on our eternal home and what you've got for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Boy, uh, so much can be said about heaven. You know, uh, we, I, I love our, our country. I love our nation. I, I, I don't lo love some things going on in our nation. I love our home, man. I, you know, when you walk in, something about walking in home, man. It's just something fresh and new about it. Um, you know, some folks... Uh, I think of two different friends. I've got one friend that's in heaven now. He's there now. David Maynard lived in the house that he was born and grew up in and was able to buy it from his parents' estate after they passed away. So he got to live in, with a few exceptions, some parsonages here and there, and, and a few diff different little exceptions, and living at La Honda Civic, going all over the country preaching for about 15 years. Uh, he, he, he got to live in the same house all his life, in a sense. Wouldn't that be... Kind of a cool thing, I guess, a neat thing. Then I think of another friend, a, a, a dear friend of mine, that, uh, that uh, his childhood was rough. And um, I, I don't know how, without going into detail, I mean, I, I guess to say the least, he grew, grew up in a broken home. But, you know, we kind of used to joke about it when we were younger and all. And he talked about that he was an expert mover because when he was a little boy, about every month or two or three months, he moved and went from apartment building to a little rental house to another apartment building and, and all, you know. And he's never a stable home now. This fellow I'm speaking of knows Jesus and uh, is born again. He's got an eternal home. I, I grew up in Monticello, Georgia, and my parents divorced when I was in third grade. And we moved to Macon and... Uh, you know, it's kind of like rock my little world. All I knew was my little the little town square and going up to Eddie Ray's, get a barber, uh, you know, going up to Eddie Ray's barber shop and getting a haircut and the red and white grocery. All I knew pretty much was the little town of Monticello. Boy, my, my life changed and all. But for years, Monticello was my home and I longed to get to, to get sick, turn 16 where I could get a driver's license, drive up there. And I did that and, uh, and all. And for years, I always thought, man, I'll one day want to go home but now as I've grown here and got roots in this part of the earth I I don't have that desire to move up there anymore I you know I, I I still call it home but I don't want to go there but I can tell you what there's a place that God's going to prepare there's a place one day that we're all going if you know Jesus Christ your savior that I am I, I lost the desires for that first for that earthly home but I'm gonna tell you what I gain in desires more and more every day for that heavenly home and one day we're going there a lot going on in this passage here, the, uh, that, that concern, that, that, that beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. We're warned several times in the Scriptures, several calling out phrases in the Word of God, be not ignorant of this, or, uh, you know, Jesus had some things where he'd repeat different phrases sometimes, and, and uh, you know, you better listen to this, you better, better hear what I got to say, but be not ignorant. And he talks about that. I think it's three times the word of God that phrase is used, be not ignorant of this one thing. But in all three times it has to do with the Lord coming back, the second coming of Christ or, or, the, or the rapture, one of the two in First Thessalonians. But it goes on and, and says there, and talks about, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and with elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth 
also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, that's talking about the great day and that time had passed in the end of uh, after the battle of Armageddon, after the thousand year millennial reign, when this heaven and earth will uh, burn away and we'll uh, move over on the new Jerusalem. I don't know exactly how that take place, but in the in great white throne judgment, it says, you know, it says they were there before the Lord, the lost. They were there before the Lord that everything else had burned away. There was nothing there. All that we'd known in all of this life was gone. I, now, forgive me for my political view on this point, but when I read that, that it, from, uh, the elements shall burn away with melt, away with fervent heat, and all these lies of the government and all this about electric cars and all that kind of stuff, I was going to save the planet because we're going to dig out that, mine, lit, that lithium and make them batteries to put in electric cars and we're not going to burn fossil fuels, and it's going to save the planet and all that. But can I tell you something? Tesla's is going to burn that day too. And all, it said the elements, it said the elements, lithium, I don't know if lithium itself is an element or not. It's much smarter than me got to say if it is or not. But it's made of some of the things, and all, it's going to burn away. So you ain't going to have time, there ain't going to be nowhere to drive your Tesla to, but all the, all the lithium's going to be gone. Your Tesla ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so they're not saving the planet. They're not fixing anything. Okay. However, I like to own the Tesla. I think they're pretty cool cars. And if you spend $100,000 on one, they're pretty quick, believe it or not, until it's not quick when the battery <laughs> runs out. <laughs> The moral of the story is get you a gasoline generator and put it in the trunk, right? <laughs> Back to more serious things there. I, I say that in somewhat in humor, but at the same time it's sad that we worship and the children in government schools are taught to worship Mother Earth and, and be conservatives and, and uh, you know, all this green movement and such as that. And, and it, that's, that's not going to fix what, what America needs is Jesus Christ. Because there's a plan for this earth, and it's not good in the long run. It's going to be burned away. It's going to be gone. But praise God, because of what Christ did on Calvary, we got a home waiting for us, don't we? Let's talk about this heaven. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slacks, but as long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should Come to repentance. Well, this reminds me, it says, it says uh, this promise and that, that he's not willing that any should perish it makes me think about John 3, 16. If we believed on him, we'd not perish. And the reason being of that is because he loved us. And, and uh, I want to talk about the, the prize of heaven. It'll be Jesus Christ. It'll be him on that throne. It'll be him that's not slack concerning his promises. It's him that, that uh, God that gave his only begotten son because he loves us so much. But there's Jesus Christ, this prize, this wonder that we'll see in heaven. And I, I've said it many times, and sometimes I feel like an old parrot just repeating things sometimes and all. But I know we, I, and I want to see my grandparents too, man. Boy, I wish I could sit down. You know, you don't realize, you don't realize your parents and grandparents as life progresses. You so much wish you could sit down and, and have conversations again and listen this time to what they were telling you. And, I, and sure, I, I'm excited to, about all, seeing lost love, you know, uh, loved ones that's gone on before us, so rather I should say, uh, and, and seeing all them and all that. But there's no prize greater than that. The darling son of God that died on the cross paid our sin debt. But his love, let's talk about his love. Uh, we're saved uh, because of, of that love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. It's that love we're talking about, this Jesus' love this, that he came to, to pour out to us, to, to exemplify on the cross. According to Romans 5, 8, when he died on that cross, he, he displayed that love that he, that he has for us. It's divine love. In John 15, verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. But it's an inseparable love that he has for us. That all for all eternity, that we'll get to bask in that love of God, and that, and that just uh, man. I only I, I don't. I, sometimes we try to think about it, and there's different songwriters and authors have written much about heaven, and the Bible has certain things, but we just don't really get all, get all of it. And all, but I I can't wait to see him and 
to see the one that loved me so much and loved me in spite of who I am and loved me in spite of my ways and loved me in spite of my sin that he went to the cross and paid my sin debt because he loves me. But it's an inseparable love who shall separate us from the love of Christ. There's persecutions, tribulations, that list goes on over in Romans chapter 8. But he's surprised not only because of his love that the love that he is that caused him to die for our sin. But because of his life, we just got through a few weeks ago with Resurrection Sunday and the fact that he lives. We serve a living Savior. And, and uh, man, this is kind of, I uh, don't want to spend a lot of time with this morning, but, but in this uh, passage here, it goes back and forth in, in the different judgments of God. And there's different days of the Lord in the Bible, and day, the day of God. And, and there's, a, there's the rapture, there's the catching away of the bride that's described in Revelation 4.1 has come up hither. And, uh, you know, and of course that, the, the catching away in 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1st, 1st, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, these things. And that there's a day of the Lord, a day of the, of the coming of the Lord. We're talking about where he doesn't come to earth, but he comes and meets in the cloud and we go to him, so to speak. And then thousand, uh, seven years after that, there's the coming of the Lord, that true second coming where he'll come. And we'll come back with him and uh, he'll rule and reign from the city of David, from the Throne of David in Jerusalem. And you make, you make one thing for sure. They're not going to be arguing over who owns that land when he's sitting on that throne over there. As all those that's trying to uh, wake up the sleeping bear over there, uh, man, they're going to pay their due price. And, and Christ will rule and reign there. We'll pay homage to go worship him and for a thousand years. And then that, this day of God just comes about here, the end of that, and, and there's a few more little prophecies we have of the unloosing of the devil for a season, for a few a little period of time and all that. But, but then all the, those that in Revelation 20, all those that go before him, this lost, this undone, they'll, they'll face that great day of reckoning as they'll stand before him. No matter what bodily form is left behind of them, whether it be burned away, cast into the ocean. The Bible talks about the grave and the sea, all that to give up the dead. It'll, you, they'll gather enough of them to be there that they'll bow before Jesus and that truth will t- take place as stated in the Word of God that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that, thou, that he is the Lord. Well, the problem is it'll be too late and that's the day of reckoning as they're cast away and God's power is displayed and the, the burning away of the earth and the sinners standing before him and the grand, uh, man, if you could just, I don't think Hollywood could put that on a screen. I don't think anywhere near what that day and the fear of that day, what it's going to be for those that stand before him, that bow their knee, that never trusted him. But then for those of us that do know him as Savior, boy, it's just going to be so sweet. I believe we'll witness that with tears. Those that have cast away, but then I believe we'll slip away, and there's a period of time over in later in Revelation 21, I think it is, talks about all the memory of this life, all that stuff, no more tears, no more sorrow, all those things will be completely gone and be forever eternal bliss with this one. And it's all because he's alive. You know, if they, they went that, that Sunday morning, if they went to that grave and he was still there and there dead, you could, none of this would matter. None of it would make a hill of beans. We'd just be hopeless without hope and, and all. But because he lives, we can live also. Because of his love, we live. Because, and we get to go to heaven because of his life. He conquered death, he conquered hell and the curse of sin, the curse of the law. All that was conquered there, but his life, 1 Peter 2, 21, for even even here and too were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So we'll see there, spend our eternity with him uh, that died for us, that loved us so much, but until we see that day, we know that he's our example. We need to model our lives, live like him, live after him, walk with him, the footsteps of Jesus. We started off singing. I don't know if you did that on purpose, but that was a good song for the day uh, because whether it be for us and what the Lord has around the corner for us or for Hardison and what the Lord has for us, we need to stay in the footsteps of Jesus wherever they go and whatever whatever he leads us to do, we need to be faithful. 
1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. I'm glad that he loved us. I'm glad because he loves to go to heaven, but I'm glad he lives. And because he's alive, we can go to heaven. But we can also talk about his lordship. I think about, I, I've probably mentioned this before, as I... Uh, Man, there's those that deny, and those brothers in Sunday school last week spent the whole lesson there in the latter part of Luke chapter 20, and there's a few verses about the fact that he's the Messiah. There's still those that not only deny that he was the Messiah, there's those that deny that he was ever even a man, there's those that deny, deny, deny the fact that he's the Son of God, that he's God the Son, that he ever existed. There's a lot of folks that deny him, and Mock him in every way they can. Make fun of him. Make fun of us for believing after him and on him. But that lordship, that kingship, boy in heaven, he'll be on that throne. Of course, they'll they'll the naysayers will be silenced long before then. Any also as well um, as he rules and reigns from the city of David. But in Revelation 21, 5, says, He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these things are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. With his lordship forever ruling and reigning, never to be questioned, never to be crucified again, never to be spat upon. Won't be, be anybody even in his presence that would even dare think of such a thing as that. But the prize is Jesus Christ, and we'll get to spend all eternity with him. Let's talk about the population of heaven. Who's going to be there? The redeemed, simple as that. The saved, the born again, those that trusted him, or those that didn't have mental capacity to understand the difference between good and evil will be there, by, but it's all by the same grace. Boy, I'm glad we got a city called heaven we get to go to, aren't you? The population will be the redeemed. Uh, over in Revelation 21, I'm going to read verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, and there came, there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither I will show thee the bride the lamb's wife and, and uh, John the apostle got to see see into heaven to see into this future city and he says he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God and boy John got a little preview he got a little glimpse and, and uh, you've probably heard me say this some folks don't get it when I say it, but I like it, man, that, that I believe when John saw that, that, I, that he saw me that day. Because if he saw heaven, I was there. That's in the future tense saying was for the future. It's kind of weird. But he's looking forward in time, and he's seeing that New Jerusalem, that city. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I was like Forrest Gump, looked over there and waved from over the side or what. I'm like, hey, John, how you doing today? I, I don't know how it was, but, but if you know Jesus, you're in that picture right there. When he looked and saw New Jerusalem. The holy city descending out of heaven from God. The population of it. Well, all this trusted Christ as Savior. In Revelation 21, verse 27, it says, And there shall be in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's divine matter. If you've ever trusted Christ, your name was written immediately uh, forever and permanently in the Lamb's book of life. Well, think about going to that city. Who's there? Well, the redeemed, ultimately. Um, how's this tie today? Tie in with today. Uh, the born again folks, kin folks, friends, prophets, kings, disciples, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, John the Baptist, the Apostle John, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother, Moses, Micah, Malachi, 
Luke, Levi, Lazarus, Lazarus. Think about Adrian Rogers. Mm. Want to shake his hand? What a pulpiteer. John Phillips. Brother Roloff. Billy Kelly, Buster Seaton. Y'all probably don't know who they are. Billy Sunday, Oliver B. Green. Boy, I think back of men that blaze the trails and preach the word of God with fire and fervency. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say here is who's going to be there? We may have partings on this side and separations that hurt. Sometimes we don't understand. But this ain't home. Just a pause button. Uh, Malvin Miller, my preacher, led me to the Lord. Phyllis Davis. Amen. Good to see you again, brother. Oh, Jeremiah Long. Amen. And us. Me and my wife are going to be there one day. I hope it's a long time, unless the rapture take place. And each of us in here. Yeah, now, I think back, and I was thinking about going over this this morning. I was thinking about every church I pastored. And uh, a lot of them I get to see somewhat regular every now and then or once every year two years or something like that and most of them still stayed friends with them through the years i think about alma jean giddens lady of the first church a little widow lady lived off a nothing widow lady paycheck little old bitty tiny houses made cakes for a living to pay to make ends meet i mean you'd go there before any holiday and she'd have them layers a little thin layers about that big all over that little old house. On the arms of the chairs, they'd be them little pans on the, I mean, everywhere she could stick one. I never saw one on the, in the bathroom, I don't reckon. But, man, she'd fill that little house up with layers and put that stuff together and made just great cakes. And, and that, but I, I'm going to see her. Uh, folks there in Bonaire, folks in Byron, at the Faith bad folks in Lizella and all, and man, it's it's hard leaving. It's so hard leaving. But this ain't final. And we'll see each other on this side. But if it makes you feel a little bit better than it does me to know that this is just a little short period of time that we got all forever, eternity, for all on and on and on with the one that died for us and the one that we're here really about is Jesus Christ. And boy, it's going to be a sweet time. It's going to be a, a wonderful time in heaven. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we've had a lot of conversation lately about it. And, and all. And, and it'll always be a conversation about it. At what point of heaven will we know who we are and who was, who uh, the different ones were and all that stuff. I can't answer all those in extreme. I mean, it, to be exact, the only one I'm, I'm sure about is in New Jerusalem that the former things of this life will be passed away. I don't, know if that, I, I don't know exactly how far to take that, what to go, and all that, but I believe until that day and time, I believe we would know, be known as we're known. And I, I, I don't, I, whatever heaven consists of, I don't think there's anything that we can look at and say, well, I sure wish such and such was here. I sure wish this was the way it was. I believe it's going to be so good, we're just going to be excited and thanking Him, praising Him. And that brings me to the, uh, another thing there, the practice of heaven. Revelation 4, uh, 8 through 11, this is shortly after the rapture of the church, and it says the church is addressed in a historical sense in Revelation 1 through 3, and then starts off, four, verse 4, chapter 4 starts off, come up hither, and then the church is not mentioned again until Revelation 19 we come back. And it's because of tribulation, great tribulation on earth. But, but we're going to be in heaven. 
But this is what happens in heaven. It says, in the foreign, the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And with those beasts, I like that triune God, that holy, 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 one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost there. And when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And we see there, and it's not long after. I don't know the exact timeline, but after the rapture of the church, when we go before him, we'll go to that, the uh, judgment seat of Christ, and we'll have those crowns that we uh, earned for our labors with the right motives, and we'll cast them there. Those four and twenty elders, a representation of the body of Christ. So we'll worship him, boy, we're going to praise him. We're going to give him praise for all he ever did. And uh, that, that, as those seraphims there were saying, uh, let me see where it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things for Thy pleasure they are, and we're created. Boy, we're just going to worship him. And then there's another passage over in Revelation 19. Uh, I'm going to turn over there and you turn there with me if you want to read it. It's right before the actual second coming. The stage is set. The judgment's coming. It's like, almost like it's just there around sharpening the axes and swords and spears, but the great weapon of war will be the tongue of the Lord Jesus Christ, the words that he speaks ultimately. In Revelation 19, it says in verse 1, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, and, and, uh, Alleluia salvation. Now that's because it's translated from Greek, right? It says Alleluia, but the way that's really pronounced is Hallelujah. Okay, yeah, so Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, y'all got that. Okay. Uh, it says but Hallelujah and salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth and her fornication and her and hath avenged the blood of her servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her, her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts shall uh, fell down and worship God that sat on the throne there's another deity of Christ, God, that sat on the throne. Who sits on the throne? Jesus. Sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, uh, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of the many waters, and the voice of the mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The all-knowing, all-powerful, almighty God, he reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And it goes on, if you read through there, you'll see he comes in the, uh, on the, riding that horse, and his army is behind him. Uh, as in, I joke about John seeing me when he saw New Jerusalem come down, I'd have to say, I have to joke about this, that that'd be the first day I'd be a good rider on the horse because I don't do so well. I can walk around slow on them, but when they take off running, I feel like I'm a bounce. How them cowboys stayed on them, I don't know. I, was, I guess I wasn't meant to be a cowboy. And, uh, man, any time I've ever been on a horse, I just walk around slow. And, uh, man, they get to running, I feel like I'm going to bounce off that thing. But that day, I'm going to be a master cowboy falling in behind the king of kings, Lord of glory, as he comes down to whoop the all that <laughs> what it boiled down to, all them Mormons is gathering, picking on Israel now. They're going to be a final reckoning day for all of them as they gather together to take up sides and, well, that word of God and slay them. And the Bible talks about the blood will be up to the bridles of the horses. There'll be so much death and destruction that day in his judgment. But the practice of heaven, that's back on earth, the practice of heaven is this crowd shortly before he goes out and they take up and go to war. 
in the second, the true second coming of Christ. That's they're they're there in heaven. They're worshiping the Lord God Almighty, the Creator. They're 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 worshiping. It shows a picture that we can be seen in 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 Revelation chapter four of us. We're going to be there. We're going to be worshiping Him. So we see the prize. We see the population. See the practice. Let me give you one more thing. The patiently waiting. Look at verses 13 through 15 in our text um, of 2 Peter chapter 3. And verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we ought to be looking for that home. Got our eyes above. Realizing this ain't home, but there's an eternal home for the child of God. And verse 14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, seeing how you're doing that, and you're patiently waiting on the Lord, it says, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. So verse 13, as we look for him. Verse 14, as we look, live for him. Church, I can't, I'll probably talk a little bit more about this tonight. But as you march forward and go forwards, integrity and honor will shut the mouth of the naysayers. And just walk straight, keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't put up with no junk. Um, guard the wolves that may come in. Lift up the name of Jesus. Stand for truth. Stand on truth. And love one another. Within and without. Love the sinner. Share the gospel. Which goes to the next point. Verse 13, we look for him. Verse 14, as we look, we ought to live for him. And verse 15 is kind of an interesting thing. It says, in the, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. But look at that, an account to make it be so, to, 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 to to reckon it's to be so. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Okay, go back to nine, verse nine. The Lord is not slight concerning his promise, as some men count slightness, but his long suffering to us were not willing any should rep- any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So long suffering of the Lord is for one reason. What's that reason? Salvation of sinners. He's patiently waiting. I, I can't, I, this is me with my early earthly thinking that I believe his patience is probably wearing thin because of the wickedness of man. But the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. So it's accounted so. So our time left, the, the only purpose, the only reason God hadn't called us out right now is there's folks on the way to hell that need to hear about Jesus. And that's our purpose. And Paul, he gives a likeness to Paul there, our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Boy, he went everywhere he went and preached the gospel, told him how to live for Jesus, didn't he? Set things in order, didn't he? So the patiently waiting, look for him any day now. I'm not no, I'm not no prophecy expert, obviously I'm not no English major either, right? Uh, but as looking around things going on and things going on with Israel and uh, boy I read something from Phil Stringer the other day um, look him up if you don't know Phil Stringer but uh, I read something the other day and he talked about the different nations that are the allies and the enemies that are gathering right now and man it was some powerful stuff with some of the armies and parts of the world and things like that and um, 
I'm not going to sit here and date say it or date say it and try to date say it. I'm not going to try to date say it and tell you that when this army joins and that army joins and this happens, this happens, all I can say is he's coming soon. And we're going yonder. And that's something to rejoice about and be thankful for and be, be excited about. But it's not exciting though we leave loved ones and friends and neighbors behind that we'll watch one day as they confess him Lord as they cast off eternal like a father. We'll witness that. That's nothing to rejoice about, is it? So the challenge remains the same, doesn't it? Look for him. As we look, live for him. Talks about peace in there. Keep that peace. Guard that peace. Peace makes or breaks a local church. Now, no, grace, love, you could say a lot of things could be put in that blank. But if there's not peace, the Holy Spirit of God is a peace-loving God. And he's not going to dwell where there's strife. You can see it over and over and over again. The Bible is a symbol of the Holy Spirit is a dove in the very Bible. Watch a dove. Dove's not going to go hang around where there's jackhammers, a lot of commotion going on there, peace-loving little critters. The Holy Spirit of God walks in the place of peace. He walks to promote peace. He walks to give us peace with God and the peace of God he gives us. But in his dwellings in the local church setting, in our families and homes and all, he does not and is not going to hang around and work and dwell amongst strife. So guard that peace, please. But he's been long-suffering for a reason. Tell others about Christ and go forwards. And uh, whoever the Lord has for to come here, follow after him. And I'm, what by that I mean, what if he has says visitation Sunday? Not Sunday. Probably ain't gonna do that. He may Sunday night. I don't know. Michael takes their teens on visitation hour for church on Wednesday night every Wednesday. That seems to work pretty good kind of convenient they ain't got no excuse they can say well get in the van you know come on. but uh seriously if it starts off with a i focus more on the teaching side the telling side and the living side but your next pastor may be an aggressive soul winner please let me hear good things and of the willingness to go now i know some of you may have age on you and probably not gonna be able to uh, man, I remember me and my boys always went so winning. And this one particular fella got out, and and uh, we I walked around one side of the car, and one of my boys sat in the car. So we get to go to it door. You don't want to bombard him. And and the other fellow got out and walked up that side, and I looked, and he was gone. I'm not gonna say his name now, but I was like, brother, so and so. I looked, and man, he got out and just rolled up on, just fell over and rolled up in the yard there. I went over, and he got up and kind of wiped the dirt off, and went and told folks about Jesus. You may fall sometime, but get up and wipe the dirt off. Just go tell somebody about Jesus. But patiently waiting. You know, this is a hard day. Um, I don't understand it. I've questioned myself, questioned it over and over and over again. But the end result's the same. The, and I believe the Lord's going to put somebody here and it'll all make sense. And hopefully soon. I hope that it's not too soon. I don't want anybody jumping in my grave that quick. <laughs> but time enough you've had to pray about it and pray about it and pray and see God provide and see the church go on. I, I've read, you know, a lot and heard different people talking about the uh, heritage of Hardison. Man, there's some years, there's glory years. I mean, it's a known thing that the Hearts was the largest church in Crawford County for a lot of years. It was a thriving church. And now, we're not seeing souls saved by the dozens, but I think it's a very thriving church now in the sense that it's a peaceful, loving church and sweet spirit here and good people here. But I love just, I can't wait to hear the news and know and see that God's doing great and mighty things at Hardison Baptist Church. But heaven, home sweet home for all eternity. Boy, I can't wait to go there. Do you know Christ is your Savior? 
Do you know that you know that you know that if you died right now, that you'd go to heaven? And can you back that with a Bible verse or a Bible truth? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. What do you need to do today? Maybe you're here today and there's something nowhere near anything I've even talked about, just something you need to bring to this old-fashioned altar and talk to the Lord about it. What do you need to do this morning? invite you to join me. Stand if you can. We'll sing this as you respond to the Holy Spirit's leading. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly